Rachel's going to the kids ministry volunteer Friendsgiving today. I'm not going to be able to go because I have a set of playoff games for youth football. This is my last week of youth football. But since I can't go, I can make some kind of dish. And since she wants to be able to eat it, and I don't know what else they're going to have there, we're going to make one of our breakfast casseroles. I'm going to use the recipe for my broccoli casserole. I'll leave a link for that right up here. Uh, but what we're going to do is not use broccoli. I'm just going to use like a bunch of ground beef and pork because that's what I have. So that's what we're going to use. So we got our blocks in nice and hot. Now we're going to take our meat mixture and go ahead and brown it up. This is the meatloaf mixture from Aldi. And it's just a mixture of ground beef and ground pork. We'll add a little bit of the Redmond's organic season salt to it. And a little bit of regular Redmond. Now, I don't think there's enough meat for this casserole because Rachel just got like a one pound package. So I have a bag of our bacon ends from when we make our own bacon. These are just like the ends and I chop them up and we use them for something like this. So we're gonna go ahead and cook these up as well and mix it all in. While the bacon's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and do the eggs. So we're using a dozen eggs. Use a teaspoon of Redmond Real Salt. We're gonna go with a teaspoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of onion powder. So since we are not using cheese, and cheese is a little bit of a thickener in this recipe, we're gonna use keto chow chicken soup. So we're gonna go with four ounces, or half a cup, of heavy whipping cream. And then I'm gonna add in like two tablespoons of keto chow chicken soup, which is about a half a scoop. So we're gonna take a pan, put in the bacon and the beef mixture, and then mix all this up. So unfortunately, the keto chow, it's a little lumpy in the egg mixture. So we're gonna go ahead and stick it in the Vitamix for a second and really get all those lumps out of there. Okay, yeah, that's much better, ready? So now all we're gonna do, pour it over the top. into the oven, 350 degrees, till it's done, about 25, 30 minutes. And Rachel's on cleanup duty. Because it is the easiest duty. Usually it is the worst duty, but this thing is super easy to clean. Honestly, when we bought that Blackstone, it was really just because it looked cool and we were gonna mostly make eggs on it. But now we're doing the ground beef and everything on it because why not? You don't have to dirty a pan or anything. I mean, a lot of times we go out to the outside Blackstone, but if you just need to stay in the house, anything that you would do in a frying pan, you can do on this in the house and it's easy to clean. Well, and the lid really does keep a lot out. So we have had pouring rain for the last couple of days. So even going outside has been a pain to cook. So it's really nice to just have this as a backup, even for bacon when we have to. Every single time we sit down in the morning. Charity wants to be a part of the show. She comes and sits next to us every single time, which is fine. I like seeing her. So I have a non-scale victory. I got these pants from my friend. She gave them to me when I went over to her house for my birthday to eat. Somebody that she worked with had given them away and I was like, I'll totally take them. And I got home and I could not get them on. I couldn't get them on over my thighs. By the time I was going to Keto Palooza, I still could not get them on. And not only did I get them on this morning, I don't even know what made me think, hey, go try those, it's been a while. So yeah, I put them on, I zipped them up, I buttoned them, I'm wearing them.
Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. That way, every single time Joe makes a casserole and I pass it off as if I did it, you'll be alerted to it. Welcome to day four. <laughs> Five of the road is it day five? back. It is day five already. Five wow. days. Wow. So yes, so this this is a continuation of beef butter bacon egg where we slowly integrate new foods, old foods, back into our diet so we can see if they cause inflammation. And that's one of the benefits of beef butter bacon eggs or any other very restrictive food challenge like a beef and butter fast or a keto chow only fast or okay. an egg fast. We've done them all. The real benefit to all of them is not that there's some magic in eggs, though there is magic in eggs, or that there is magic in beef, though there really is magic in it beef. Magic. We've kind of proven that. Well, and we know bacon. But it's that you've eliminated everything else and that's what makes it so magical is that you eliminate everything else except for one thing and then you slowly incorporate other things back into your lifestyle, not a bunch of things at once, and then you can start figuring out what makes you feel best. The key is one thing at a time and then you can add something else a couple of days later along with that one thing, but you wanna give yourself, I would say, at least two days to really see how you react because a lot of times you can eat something on Monday and it doesn't really start affecting your body completely until like the end of Tuesday or Wednesday as a fly pass, flies past the lens. I know. Well, and we have done all kinds of different restrictive challenges, mm -hmm. you know? I think what has made B, 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 and E the most magical is the fact that we've done it for the longest amount of time. Yeah, I mean, our average challenge has usually been like a week, maybe two weeks. The longest thing we've ever done is keto chow for a month but we've never done anything for 44 days. So it, it, it's been an interesting journey, a little bit of a busy day as, as always. Um, we have Rachel's going to kids Friendsgiving yeah, the, and I have games. So yeah, we've got Friendsgiving and I'm bringing casserole with me. So I'm guaranteed to have something. It's kind of nice sometimes to bring your own food. I think sometimes I have a, a crappy attitude because I'm going to something, especially during the holidays, and it's like, I wonder if there'll be anything there for me. Make sure. The best way to ensure that is to bring something yourself. You know it's going to be safe. And you also have an opportunity to, to kind of share keto with everybody in your realm of influence. Because you those people that are not keto have a preconceived idea of what sugar-free food will taste like and they usually think it's gonna be terrible yeah like last night I was at my game and one of my crewmates actually made a comment he's like you've lost a lot of weight in like the last month and I'm like well I dropped <laughs> nine pounds of body fat now he happens to be an ER nurse oh wow so he's like what are you doing and I'm like eating nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for 44 days you love that with and a smile especially when you're telling a health professional and he's like what and I'm like, yes. And he kind of got it a little bit. Of course, he was like, what's your cholesterol? I'm like, you don't want to know what my cholesterol is. Ask me what but my I remnant is. But I will tell you what my VLDL is, which is your remnant cholesterol. And he's like, what is that? And I'm like, two. And I'm like, and it, that kind of shut him up for a minute. And he's like, what's your triglycerides? And I'm like, um, it's really low. I don't want to say the numbers because we haven't shared right. like all of our numbers. But I'm like... I'll tell you what is what I said to him. I'm like, my triglycerides were like a 70 something before the challenge. And then after the challenge, they were considerably lower. So then he was like, I need to lose some weight. So tell me more about this. Well, because 
you know, what a health professional, and it, it makes sense, right? What they're reading in the textbook, what a professor is telling them, what other people that they work with is telling them, you know, that, that seems formidable. That seems like the absolute truth. It's only when you come in contact with someone who's living it out and they see you over a period of time and you've provided data that right. you've collected on yourself to them, that, that that's what changes people's minds. And that's something that Dr. Barry has talked about where he said that, Listen, as you're living this lifestyle and you're going to your doctor, even if your doctor is not keto friendly, and I know not all doctors are, first of all, don't use the word keto with your doctor, right. ever. Don't use the word keto. Doc. What is your lifestyle? I'm eating the proper human diet. I'm, el I'm eliminating overly processed foods and sugar. and sugar. Yeah. Nobody's going to complain about that. When you go in and say keto, because keto has this bad, you know, reputation, it raises their eyebrows. But if you just go in and say, like, I'm not eating sugar, I'm not even eating overly processed food, and I'm eliminating a lot of grains, a lot of times that's not going to, like, raise their eyebrows as much. But here's what happens is, is when you go in and your triglycerides drop from a 15.3, or not your triglycerides, your A1C, from a 15.3 to a 5.3. It's kind of undeniable. Even if they don't like keto right. or carnivore, they start going, huh. It's working for somebody because here. Because there's no medicine on earth that will take your A1C from a 15.3 to a 5.3, especially in like six months to a year. So that's when they start going, maybe there's, I'm still skeptical, but maybe there is something to this. And the more we do that, the more they start diving into the books, because as Dr. Barry says, doctors, they want to learn. Right. They want to learn. They spent years in school. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on their education. They have to, every year, go back and get more education. For example, in Boca in January, yeah. they're having the low carb event. And that is a specific event where doctors can go learn about this lifestyle and get educational credits for their license. That's and so, so exciting. I love the fact that like Dr. Barry and Dr. Cyrus will both be speaking of it because here's two people who are in the community who can go out and go, hey, doctors who don't believe in keto, look at this. This is the evidence. Like, I know that they say that, you know, type two diabetes is, you know, a sentence, but look at all of these reversals of type two diabetes, even if you want to call it remission, but I'm going to call it a reversal. That's what's going to open their eyes. Now we're going to be kind and we're going to be gentle yeah. and we're going to be loving when we talk to them. And if they're insistent that like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this and they give you a hard time, find a new doctor. Yeah, no, I love that perspective. And I'm going to try to to think about that more. You know, a lot of times if I'm talking... Butter wrapper in my coffee. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Is the other half in mine? When I'm talking to somebody, even if they're frustrating me, I try to keep in my mind, this is someone's child. I can talk to a child, right? right? Like, this is somebody's precious child. They are a human being, and I need to, to see them in a way that helps me to have grace for them in this moment. Sorry about that. We had to push the pause button <laughs> so I could jump into a premiere. We did our 10 things mm -hmm. that we're not going to mindlessly snack on anymore, and Joe had to pull the casserole out of the oven. So, on the docket for today... Cheese, glorious cheese. Oh, thank you for singing that so I didn't have to. Are you excited? Nobody wants to hear me sing. Yes, I am very excited because everybody knows I love cheese. Yes, and so cheese. does Rachel. I do. And the problem is, is I have a slight problem with cheese. What? Where's my problem? My problem was every time I walked past the refrigerator, I was grabbing cheese out of the refrigerator and not even good flavorful cheese. String cheese. String cheese. They're super portable. <laughs> What am I eating it for? Just because, hey, you're allowed to eat cheese on keto. It wasn't doing anything for me. It wasn't satisfying my hunger. It wasn't even bringing me like, wow, that is amazing. So as we said in the 10 things video, I want to move forward with cheese in 
if I'm going to have cheese as a snack, which we really shouldn't be snacking, like make it part of my meal, like right. ground beef with some cheese on the side or something like that. Enjoy it. It's going to be a flavorful cheese. And other than that, I'll eat cheese when it's incorporated into a recipe or something like that. So what are we going to do today? I'm thinking just like some beef. And then I have those cheese curds that we bought at Carol's on the way home from Keto Palooza. I love how you talk about cheese like we're going to be uncorking a fine wine. Cheese for me is like chocolate cake for really? the, you know, non-keto person. Huh. When people dream about desserts, you're dreaming about cheese. Cheese. I've always loved cheese. And being on keto, I love cheese even more, but I want to put it in its place. Good idea. Because I was eating probably a pound of cheese a day. And when you consider every ounce of cheese has about a carb, even if the label says zero, and it could have more depending on the spices and flavorings that they're adding into there. I was probably eating, no kidding, no exaggeration, 10 to 15 carbs a day in just cheese. Well, it's interesting that you bring it up because yesterday when I was picking up like eggs and sausage and stuff for today's casserole, I noticed that Aldi had put out their um, advent calendar of cheese. Mm -hmm. And we got that yesterday and we, or yesterday, we got that last year. Seems yeah. like it was yesterday that we were It wasn't Christmas. even that good. It wasn't even that good. It was very bland cheeses for my taste. So I would almost rather curate my own cheese celebration like go to whole foods and buy their cheese counter and buy those little tiny ones that they have where it's like right. a leftover right you know where you can sample things i honestly think it won't be that much of a cost difference right and you'll get a variety of cheeses honestly it's probably cheaper to do that because each one of those pieces are generally about a dollar yeah and some of these cheese calendars that you buy in aldi and stuff they can be they can, 20 30 dollars yeah they can add up so um, what we're going to do today is I think we're going to have some of those cheese curds and then maybe also incorporate a little bit of cheese with the ground beef because that is how we would normally do it. What I'm going to be eliminating is, yeah, going and eating string cheese and stuff like that. It's cheese that's, that's not really doing anything. And I want to have cheese as a highlight to our meal. That's like a lot of our recipes. We're going to have cheese in them. And I'm not going to eliminate it. We eliminated it for today because Rachel's like, I can only have X amount of cheese today. And I don't want my cheese there. I want it like when we're sitting down for dinner or something like that. And I think that's the best place for me to incorporate the cheese. Me too. And I think that in, you know, our, some of the casseroles, cheese does take center stage. Yeah. It like really adds to the dish. Like I think about like the taco pie or mm -hmm. some of our other breakfast casseroles. It really tastes delicious in it. Cheese on a pizza where right. it's like cooked and incorporated properly. But just every single time I have a hamburger, have cheese on top of it, I just don't think it's necessary. Yeah, my, my, my thing moving forward is going to be if I don't taste it when I'm eating it, there's no reason for me to have it. Right. And let's face it, if you're putting, or if I'm putting anyway, something like a, just a bland cheddar cheese or provolone on a burger, it's not adding any flavor to my burger. It's just there to be there, you know, I'm unnecessary to have fat, unnecessary carbs. If you want to count calories, unnecessary calories. And I, I really wanted to just highlight my dish. I just got a phone call from the crew chief for our playoff games, and I guess they're running early. We're not supposed to have to be there until 1230, and it is currently 1130, and he said we're going to be done in about 25 minutes. So I got to get out of here. Games are done. Football season is over for the year. I'm hungry. It's about 5 o'clock. We actually got done right on time, so I'm going to call Rachel, see what she's doing and uh, what she wants to do for dinner because I'm really close to Costco. So maybe we can step at Costco and find something. Otherwise we're gonna do ground beef. I think I'm gonna make some of the Maria Emmerich protein sparing bread. I was gonna try her new recipe without using egg yolks, but I was looking at the recipe and I know it works. She's made it and she's a phenomenal cook and recipe developer. But for me, I don't mind using the egg whites. First of all, I like adding the yolks back in now because I'm not really looking to save the fat. I want the yolks in there. And I like the taste of it when you add in the yolks. But it's also, for me, a lot more expensive when you're doing that. When you're having to use that protein powder, which the bottom line is it's very expensive. I mean, a bag of it's like $55. 
I'd rather just use the egg whites. Rachel just buys the cheap eggs from Walmart or Aldi or something like that. And those are the eggs that we use when it comes to making the bread. It's not like they're using like top quality pasture raised eggs when they make those egg white powders. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some of that now. Okay, so we do get a lot of questions with me adding the egg yolks back in. People are curious, when do I add it back in? I add them back in after the egg whites have been beaten to stiff peaks. And usually I try to do about six, but right now I have all 12 egg yolks in here and I just kind of dump a few of them in there. Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's seven, sometimes it's five, whatever it is. So I just add a few in while the beater is running and then I add in the egg white powder. Hello there. I am eating some food. I'm hungry. I thought you were going to eat. You called me or I called you after my first game and you're like, I'm hungry. And I said, well, go home. We don't have to eat together. Make We have one of those sausages left and I totally... we had eggs. I said, go make some sausage and eggs. Don't like you got to listen to your body. Don't yes. eat based on your watch or right. because you have to wait for your husband for five hours eat when your body tells you to eat. Well, I was hungry this morning. I thought, okay, we're going to have a coffee with butter and I eggs in it. Put butter and an egg in it. And But I was like, that's all right. I'm going to eat part of my casserole when we get to church. Well, it's kind of funny. People will kind of come against keto. They'll be like, I could never do keto. But if you put out a keto food... It's the first one to go. ...on the table, I did not even get a forkful because fat is flavor. Right. So it's it's super delicious and yummy. So, so yeah, I, di I didn't get any um, keto casserole, which was completely fine. I love being an ambassador for keto dishes. Like, you will enjoy this. Bring this to the, your next brunch. But anyway, we had a beautiful Friendsgiving, and then... I was hungry afterwards and I called you and I had every intention of eating. So I actually browned some hamburger and pork it was again. so nice to come home and not have to cook. Thank you. I made some bacon, which you have to see. Oh my God. It came out For so pretty. For someone who can't cook, this, this is perfect. Purse bacon. Yes. It's like perfect purse bacon. Now, I would not try to reheat this because it's going to get like burnt. No. But this, this is purse bacon. That's purse bacon. It, you did a great job on Thank that. Thank you. I was so happy. But then, as hungry as I was, I started talking to my daughter on the phone, started decorating with little tchotchkes for, for Christmas. And you and forgot you were hungry. Totally forgot I was hungry. That's just goes to show you if, especially if you're doing a fast. Let's, let's yeah. say you're doing a 24 hour fast and you're having a hard time to get through that just know that at your normal eating time we've talked about this before you're going to get hungry because it's your hormones but if you can distract yourself for 15 to 30 minutes the hunger will go away and that's exactly yeah. what happened i think the only reason why i even wanted to eat as early as i did is because i had it in my mind i'm going to eat at this event i'm going to eat at like 11 right. o'clock in the morning which is abnormal usually so yeah, when that didn't happen, I was like, hey, I was promised food, you know? So it was great. It's like 68 degrees outside. It it's is so freezing. Nice. It's nice. It's cold. We should go in the we hot tub. We could turn off the air in the house. We should totally go in the hot tub. Okay, let's, let's, well, no, 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 your first bite can't be ground beef. Oh, I let's, want it. Let's go over what we have. Okay. So you made ground beef and ground pork, yep, right? mixed together. Mixed together. I mixed a tablespoon of butter in there because I know it is like, it was like 90, 10 ground beef. I wanted to up the fat a little bit because fat is flavor. It is. Then I put an ounce of feta cheese. 
I wanted blue cheese, but I didn't feel like going to the store to get blue cheese, and we had feta cheese. There was a moment when I saw this cheese on top. These are cheese curds. So on top, and that's gonna have to be your like, first bite. I was like, is there Cheetos on the top of this? Is this buffalo wing cheese curds. We bought this at that Carol's place. This is from a company called Troyer. Troyer. We bought it at that Carol's place on the way home from Keto Palooza. And so the ingredient, the serving size and stuff in this, it's one ounce. We have two ounces a piece. 100 calories per serving, nine grams of fat, seven grams of protein. So it really is like the perfect keto food. It's like yeah. one to one. One gram of carb. And then uh, the ingredients in this are pasteurized milk, cheese culture, salt, enzymes, buffalo sauce, which is aged cayenne, red pepper, and distilled vinegar. Nice. And garlic powder. That is it. Yeah. But again, here's what we're talking about. We're going to use cheese to, for us, this is not a requirement for everybody. What I want to do is I want to use it to elevate my dish. So we're going to add a little bit of feta cheese to give the flavor in the ground beef. Uh -huh. You're going to, and again, feta cheese, blue cheese, Very those flavorful. are cheeses that are flavorful and are going to come through. And then this is just because, but it's a flavor. You're going to enjoy this. Oh, how I did, did I miss cheese? That is delicious. That mm. is really good. That is really good. But see, isn't that better than eating a piece of string cheese to well, eat a piece of string cheese? I was actually talking to our daughter today, and she was talking about cheese herself. And she was saying, I am not reaching for cheese unless it's something like blue cheese or smoked gouda or something that has an action plaque packed flavor she's like has anyone ever tasted provolone on a hamburger before and no, i was like you you're so right right because you know these and she said too the the string cheeses it's the same for for her as well right so in addition to the meat and the cheese i took two slices a piece of that bacon that perfectly cooked bacon and i didn't want to reheat it because i felt like it was going to burn it's good as a topper perfect. so we put it as like a topic like a bacon bit topper i just chopped it up Mmm. And then we had one of those beef sausages from Sam's Club. I stuck that in the air fryer for like four minutes on 400 degrees. I split it open first because then it gets like crispy. Right. And then I cut that up and then I put that as a topper. So we have like carnivore bowl yeah it's like a carnivore bowl right you got a little bit of cheese and you got bacon and sausage it's interesting how colorful it is yeah so that's gonna be dinner i'm gonna eat and it may get ugly so <laughs> i'm gonna turn off the camera plus i have to go edit the day three vlog so we can put it up tonight okay so tomorrow sunday it is Sunday. It's our normal day to do keto chow. It is. Do you want keto chow tomorrow? Do you yeah. want to have one to be like ready when we get home from church? Yeah, I think that would be good. I think we should go play some keto chow roulette. This is a bad angle. I have like everything I've drank out of. And let, there's my coffee and there's Flip and there's the water I had for dinner. This is our real life. Yeah. Hey, my my office is still clean. Are you proud of me? It's been I'm two days. I'm super proud of you. I, I, like, I, I'm impressed that it's still clean. So I was thinking, we were trying to figure out what our next food to test is. Right. I think it should be some sort of a sweetener. Well, I've got sort of one with a sweetener. Okay. I don't necessarily feel like we need to test individual ingredients all the time. Right. But there's a specific food that has a couple of individual ingredients that I would like to test. And then, you know, okay, so if it causes inflammation, then we can kind of narrow it down. Like to We'd have to retest or separate those things. Separate those things. Okay. But a food that I would personally, maybe you don't want to, would like to reincorporate into our life on a regular basis because it's kind of desserty. But it also, it is a meal, and also it is very close to very, like, almost kind of carnivore. Is it the egg pudding? The Maria Emmerich egg pudding. I was like, pudding. there's, like, one thing that fits all of those categories. Right? So, yes, it has allulose in it. Yeah. And, and it has cocoa. It has cocoa powder. But that would be really delicious. It actually has three ingredients because... We're gonna use coconut milk. I will. I'm not gonna use the the, the dairy milk. The, the, yeah, you know, the sugar that's a milk. lot going we'll on. We'll use we'll use coconut milk. Okay. 
So yeah, we're testing a bunch of different ingredients there, but that is that is a food that I want to eat on a regular basis. And I'm going to be very sad if that causes some issues. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that should be the next one? Well, Unless you want to do vegetables, but oh, I, I don't think I'm ready for I'm I don't think I'm ready for vegetables. At least at least if we do the Maria Emmerich pudding, you can have it as like a dessert slash meal. Like we can have it with our meal. And but it's also desserts. They eat like a steak and then have that like right after. So you're yeah. getting a desserty thing, but it's all eggs, <laughs> right? There's not even a lot of cocoa powder. The whole thing, I think, is like a quarter of a cup a cup of cocoa powder. Yeah. What do you think? I'm in. So now the question is: Do we do the egg white only version to not have it be fatty and high calorie, or do we do the one with all of the egg yolks, which? is really fatty delicious well i you know i don't i'm not so concerned with like avoiding fat like the plague i feel like if we can try to keep things one-to-one yep, as best as that, we can that really is one-to-one if you're yeah, using the egg yolks then i say go full fat let's go full fat because i think it's it's much more like a mousse when you use the egg yolks. it's delicious it's just fatty deliciousness and yeah, I really want to do that. So you want to make that the plan for Monday? Yeah. I got a really good plan for you tomorrow, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Close your eyes. This one's yours. What'd you get? Lemon meringue. I a have lemon not meringue. had that in a minute. I would love to have lemon meringue. What? That's not fair. Can have it for you no, no. Okay, my turn. Please do something good. No peach. No peach. <laughs> Raspberry cheesecake. Raspberry cheesecake is very good. Okay, I actually think I'd rather have this than lemon meringue. Good job. Okay, I think you should make it. All right, I can make it. Okay. Now, I was thinking, we normally drink our coffee with a tablespoon of butter and an egg in it in the morning. That's what we've been doing for like 50 days now nearly. Right. And we're going to want a keto chow in the morning because it's going to be a while before we eat. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's make a keto chow with water, one tablespoon of butter. Okay. And an egg. Well, there you go. And just drink black coffee instead. So the only thing extra we're adding is the packet of keto chow, which is pretty much all protein powder. Sounds perfect. Okay, ready? So I've already got one tablespoon melted here. Let's go ahead and make your lemon meringue. Yay! Okay, you ready? Yeah. Put your water in, but don't put it all in. Yeah, because it's going to swish around my butter. Yeah, put it in. Unless you want to give me whatever leftover butter is in your, like, cup measure. Man, I love you, but that's a lot. Okay, now use the water to rinse that out. Don't put the blender ball in there. No. <laughs> I did that once. It took me an hour to get it off. So go ahead and turn it on low. You don't need to put the top on if you have it on low. I'm not Joe. Okay. Now, here, take an egg. Now, normally, if you're making keto chows way in advance, don't put the egg in. Yeah. But since we're drinking it in the morning, like it's fine to put it in. It's, it's like making your mayonnaise. Yeah. I just wouldn't put a raw egg in there and then drink it in a week. Right. So go ahead and put your egg in. Explosion. It makes it so creamy delicious when you use an egg. Then you can add your keto chow. How did you open that container without getting a poof? Slowly. We got I, to I don't know how down. to be, I don't know how to do slow. Dude, you've got like one speed. Okay, now go ahead and turn it up and get it good and mixed. I can smell the lemon can meringue smell over here. The lemon. I now I kind of wish I got lemon. It smells so good. Okay, that should be good. Go ahead and pour it in your blender bottle. Okay, go ahead and put your egg in. This is how we do it. Raw egg. This is how we do it. It tastes delicious. Nice and fatty. It's just like putting it into your coffee. Mm. And we're gonna eat I, it relatively. We're gonna fast. eat it in the morning. Now did you just dump the eggshell in there? You want to make mine? I can make yours for you. Okay. Wait, let me rinse this out first because you don't want lemon and raspberry. Lemon and raspberry actually sounds pretty good. 
That's like there, there, there had to be a candy that was like lemon and raspberry. Oh, Skittles. I bet you that would taste good. I, I don't know. This is like a different type of ra like this lemon tastes like a true lemon, and the raspberry cheesecake. I don't know. For some people, they might love it. Okay, so some of the water, butter. You could add all the butter first and then rinse out the water. I don't know why I do half and half. I don't know. I like it too. Just want to get the blender bottle. Okay, be adventurous. Don't put the lid on, Rachel. I can't do it. Don't put the lid on. Oh. As soon as I do it, I'm going to have it everywhere. There's my egg. Okay, I'm going to put the lid on. Okay. 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 We're gonna get a poof. I know, I'm trying to avoid the poof. Do not drop the paper in mine. No. There's more you're, coming. You're so meticulous. Except for <laughs> making a giant mess trying to be careful. Look at the keto chat that's being left on the side of the Vitamix. I'm so Okay. Here, I'll turn it on really fast. It'll splash up. I think that's good. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, because you put a bunch of air in it. Sorry. Now I'm missing keto chow tomorrow. Uh -oh. I'll let you sip the rest of what's in that. Mm. Raspberry cheesecake warm is really good. <laughs> the bread is done. It you looks know how really bad good. I want a piece of that right now. What but did you, you gotta top wait it with? 30 minutes. What did you put on top? Uh, on the top of it, I put the Redmond organic garlic pepper. It makes a huge difference. It's it just like, it's like flavor town. You would swear it's everything but the bagel seasoning. Yeah, I know. Right? It's would like it, really There's good. something about it being The only thing that's really missing is the poppy seeds. Yeah. You know, so I, I just love there. that. I just love that stuff. Me too. So Maria Emmerich putting on Monday, which means we have to make it tomorrow because it needs to sit overnight. Have you made that yet? Have you actually done the recipe or is have it just- I? Maybe we should have you do it tomorrow. I feel like it's so easy even Rachel can do it. So what I need to do, you can do it with scrambled eggs, but I think what I need to do is actually I know make hard boiled eggs. I know I haven't done it because you were always sparing me from like the farty smell. Yes, because it does smell kind of gassy. Yeah. When you first make it. But the, the gassy smell goes away like overnight. Oh yeah, it, it dissipates. So... Yeah, so how about when, when you get home from church tomorrow, make let's, some pudding. we'll make that, and then that'll be perfect for Monday night. Because if you can let it go for 12 to 24 hours... It tastes so good. It is so good. So, yeah, when I get home, I'll make the hard-boiled eggs, because okay. you have to make the hard-boiled eggs. And I know you just got a bunch of eggs, because... The did. chickens aren't working fast enough. <laughs> we're, we're concerned. I don't want them to... You know, not make enough and, and feel paranoid about it. No pressure, chickens. We'll buy eggs if we have to. We love you. What was it like to have cheese again for the first time in 49, 50 days? No, yeah, I don't even know. 50 days, I think. I feel really good. Usually, I start to feel, if I, if I feel wonky. You've been I, scared about cheese. I usually feel wonky pretty quickly. Here's the difference. I think we're going to have a better time with it because it's not all over everything. Aww. We don't have it on top of our cheeseburger and mixed inside of some side dish that we're eating. And then snacking on every time we go to the refrigerator. And then snacking on all the time. Yeah, I mean, because I think in our mind we were eating one to two ounces of cheese because that's what we were counting in one meal. Right. But I bet we were eating I'm telling you, five I was, or I six was eating ounces. a pound a day. I, I think I was too. Especially... When we were doing our sub salads, and I, I can't tell you, I three four times a day, I would get a piece of like pastrami or a piece of turkey, 
And here's what's really bad because you want to taste the cheese, right? Yes. And I and when I get that, I get Swiss cheese or we were getting that. Um, what was that one cheese? Now that cheese, I would horseradish put cheese, a horseradish cheese. It was good. It's really good, but you you don't want the lunch meat to overpower the cheese. So for one slice of lunch meat, I was doing two to three slices of cheese. Well, that's two to three ounces, and I was doing that two or three times a day as a snack, but it was just meat and cheese. And that was in addition to if we put cheese on our burger or having jalapeno poppers or, you know, having cheese in a recipe. It's a lot because in the same day we were eating cheese and sour cream and cream cheese and like just how much more could we put into a day? Yeah. So once we've got cheese cleared up, please, um, that we can have it, then we can do jalapeno poppers. That's the scary one for me. Yeah. Because I, I'm Vegetable sure. Vegetable and cheese. Yeah. Well, no, just for me, it's scary to the thought of like jalapeno poppers not being good for me. That, that you know, and I know it's a jalapenos or a nightshade. I and think so we you expect a little bit. Both know having them every single night for two weeks is not a good idea. Like, it's just not great. No. It's just not. And we had so much variety on B, 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 and E. Do we really want to go back to eating the same thing every single day? It's jalapeno poppers. <laughs> we'll see how you feel. I think that I'm going to enjoy them. Like, I enjoyed this cheese. Yeah, but do you good. feel... Do you, you were worried about cheese? Not Very worried. You, not just, you weren't just worried about... It causing inflammation, but when we were talking, you were you were worried about reincorporating cheese and it becoming another problem for you. Yeah. Do you think that you may have licked that problem by just saying that, like, okay, I've set up this boundary of it's got to be within a meal or it's got to be a super flavorful thing. Like, I'm not just gonna buy string cheese and provolone cheese. And the thing is, it's not like we're always buying cheese curds. Cheese curds is my favorite thing. But they're not always available by us. Well, I think that definitely having it within the meal, that cuts out probably 80% of our cheese consumption just by saying you can't have cheese, Rachel and Like Joe. those moolala cheeses, those frying cheeses, like I would feel really good the way we used to do yes. it. You, you cut up two pieces of Eat that, it with your meal. fry it, and that is part of your meal. And... That frying cheese, I personally did not like it unless you fried it. So even if we stuck to something like that, it's I'm not going to just grab that and eat it. It's So it would have to be with a meal. Or even these cheese curds. Well, here's the thing. I think that it is easier to grab a whole packet of string cheese off of a shelf at Aldi yeah. because it's like $2 and change. Right. It's, it's cheap. So what I when we would get a cheese that's very expensive... Then I would be like, hey, we need to sit down. We need to appreciate the cheese. Like, let's enjoy it. So if we just say to ourselves, hey, cheese is a high price on us. It's probably a high price on our, like, system. Right. So we need to treat it as if we're going to sit down and eat a high prize cheese whether or not it's an expensive cheese or not. Because, like I said, I think that we could get some at Whole Foods where we're getting fancy cheeses, but like yeah. small amounts. They're like $25 a pound cheeses, but you can get a little tiny thing for like $1.50. But if we tweet it, if we tweet it, if we treat it like it's precious, we're good. So let's just hope that cheese doesn't cause a whole bunch of inflammation in the morning. We'll see what because happens. Because that, that will change everything in yeah. how much cheese we're eating. Now that I would get rid of cheese, I mean, let's not get hopeful. crazy here, but it would definitely be limiting it even more. Well, that's going to be the end of day five of The Road Back. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon in that way. Every single time we roulette keto chow, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.